tip, when pressing heavy dumbbells, get a bench to set down in front of you and put the dumbbells on that. Then you don't have to bend over and deadlift 300 pounds before you do a set of presses. I hear that's bad for you. We are here at Legacy Barbell, um, 12 weeks out from Junior USA's. Brian's officially on prep now, he's 16 weeks out from Junior Nationals. I'm going to be taking you through a chest and triceps workout today. About to slam some pre-workout and get after it, and then uh, I don't really know what we're going to do yet. We're going to kind of make it up as we go like we always do, but uh, we'll tell you what we did and why we did it afterwards, so we'll see you then. Let me shake it for you too, sweetheart. <laughs> Do what you do, brother. Alright guys, so just finished up uh, knocking out chest and tries here at Legacy Barbell. Told you we'd kind of make it up as we went, and uh, that's what we did. We actually let the camera guy pick our first exercise today. We were like, what do you want to see? So he decided we were going to do incline barbell first. So, <laughs> if you like your incline bench having a little bit more incline than it does, you can always wedge something in there and give it some more incline. So we started off with uh, cable flies. It's always kind of just like a warm up we always do. Um, today we use the uh, Prime handles. Uh, pretty cool handle actually. They sent me a set of them to try and really helps you to uh, you know not engage your biceps or roll your shoulders over when you're doing your flies. It really helps you know drive from your palms and keep your chest out like you're supposed to on flies. And uh, it makes it easier because when you're doing a fly, you don't want to concentrate on bringing your hands together, you want to concentrate on bringing your elbows together. And it makes it easier for you to be able to do that. Yeah, so kind of like what he said, I mean, when you get down to the nitty gritty, the job of all your pectoral muscles is to bring your arm across your body. So, you know, in all the presses, you know, we try and get a full stretch and then as close to completely lock down and elbow across the body as possible without taking tension off it, letting it get on the shoulder. Um, you know, like cues that we use on today that we like kind of like say ad nauseum or you know like big chest, meaning you like keep your chest out and your scapula retracted so all the tension's on your chest. before some of the heavier sets it's just like a ammonia inhalant like it's a perfectly safe it's what they use to revive people that passed out unconscious if that gives you an idea of what it does basically it just kind of gives you a hit of adrenaline and really opens up your airways so I like how it makes me feel for my heavier sets. It might not be for everyone. It might feel like you got your face blown off if it's your first time, but <laughs> it's shocking when you first <laughs> You just crack it a little bit and you open up a little bit, but uh, it's good to get focus. It's just for- It's good for the soul. Mental focus. It makes you feel alive. 
makes you. It's feel not good. needed at all. <laughs> no, you don't need to do it. It's at not all. needed. It was just it's a cool not. thing to do. Yeah. Two. Um, I found this place before he did, probably right when they opened, and it was pretty close to when I moved here, and I believe Henry reached out to me on some kind of social media. Well, I don't really remember, but I want to say it was Henry that reached out to me and checked it out, and it was really close to where my father-in-law lives, so we got this membership so we could help train and work out uh, my little sister-in-law, and um, you know, also it was a really good gym. And now that I moved and I'm closer, now we train here all the time. I just like the gym. It's got a really great vibe, you know. It's uh, definitely not for everybody. You know, I like to say it's hardcore, but not hardcore in the sense that it's dirty, because it's not dirty. It's just, you know, there's metal music going. It's all black iron plates. There's bigger people in there. They're serious about working out. Like, it's... Just a good environment. I enjoy being in there. Like nothing's ran down, nothing's broken. Everything's nice. Everything's new. Everything's all have top bars. of the line. Like all the bars are good. They've got special bunch of specialty bars. I've brought in some of my stuff up here. Brian's done the same. So it's definitely well equipped for us. So we enjoy being here. It's definitely a good gym. And Henry's an awesome dude. He's really kind of wel welcomed us with open arms everyone at the gym has so it's been cool with as much time as you spend as the gym that we do it's important that you get along and get a good vibe from the people in the gym you're at so <laughs> Tricep exercises is, uh, you know, on like cables, whether it be like one of the adjustable free motions or just like the cable station that we did them in. We call them Wolverines. Why do we call them Wolverines? Because, you know, like when X Men and the original, the original, the good Wolverine movie, whenever he just got shot up full of adamantium and comes out and he's like, Wah! like that. Well, so we're going like that with them. So that's why they're called Wolverines. And we stole them from Dallas McCarver, yeah. to be honest. But it's really good because if you are structurally bigger, if you're using cables or, or ropes or anything like that, it's really difficult to get the full contraction. But this way you're opened up and you're only using the joints that you want to and you get a really good tricep contraction and it's really easy on your elbows. Yeah. So like you said, because it's coming out like that and because we are wider, you know, uh, a lot of the handles like the rope and the narrow one, like you'll end up rolling your shoulders over and using your shoulders to press it down instead of your triceps. This is a nice one to be able to, like you said, keep your shoulders back and your elbows pinned and really get a good squeeze throughout the whole range of motion. Right, so. which is also why we used two ropes when we were doing the rope push-down too. Same idea, just so we can get our shoulders back and be using our triceps and not anything else. The Legacy Barbell started um, kind of as the uh, the big screw you to the world. Um, I hate 
gym culture and what they've made it into where when you go to a gym and you sign up, you're having to pay like an enrollment fee or initiation fee, and like first and last month up front, it ends up being like $250. I said, that doesn't fly with me. We give a lot of money to charities. We give a lot of money to take care of, uh, of veterans in need. My biggest thing is, is not many people know this about me, but I've had a couple podcasts where I've told the story. I am a suicide survivor. Uh, basically, my life was going to shit. I wanted to die. You know, I put the gun to my head, and uh, whatever deity you want to call them, I say mine's God. Uh, I heard an audible voice. I said, chill out, put it down. The very next day, I got out of the bar, started going back to the gym, started training my friends for free. We st I started the gym with supposedly 160 people were going to come sign up day one. One person did. And, uh, you know, we took, I took out loans, I took out everything I could to make this place happen. And here we are, we're in our third year, and uh, we're kicking ass, and we're growing, and hopefully in the next uh, year to 18 months, we're gonna be growing into a 27,000 square foot facility. Because I wanna play with the big boys, I wanna show them that you don't need to charge all this extra to take care of people and get them into fitness, and get them into to this lifestyle. Uh, you don't have to rip anyone's head off, you can do it and be a good person, and take care of people at the same time. Okay. You're rolling. All right, um, Carlos Romero, what is the next show you're planning on doing? How often do you do shrugs and do you do them on shoulder day? Next show I plan on doing is Junior Nationals. No, Junior USA is just kidding. I get Junior Nationals and Junior USA is confused because of this guy. But, um, and then how often do I do shrugs? I honestly haven't done a shrug probably in like four or five years, if I'm being completely honest. I get a lot of indirect work from all the uh, rowing and rack pulling and deadlifting and other stuff I do, so that's that. Um, next question, why did uh, we choose Andrew as our coach? That's from Justin Montgomery. Um, I think he had a very similar yeah. mindset. So we spoke to him on the phone, he agreed with a lot of what he was gonna say. Also, he gets a lot of people in very good condition and that's what we want. That and he's in Dallas and so he's only three hours away and I wanted someone that I could be seeing in person towards the end and it works well too because I'm sponsored by GASP and obviously Destination and Dallas is there and then the headquarters of GASP and the uh, US is there so it works well because I'll be up there a lot and he can be able to see me and stuff so that's why. Um, let's see here. Do you count the calories at all for the prep? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I'm prep. Everything's measured: fats, carbs, protein. Not only from the actual food sources, but you know, you need condiments or sauces or this is or that's used. The water intake's measured. Everything's very calculated. So that's important when you're on prep because whenever you need to make changes, it's not like you can't make like arbitrary changes. You're like, oh, I'm gonna start eating, you know, a little less. Like, no, I need to be able to go. Okay, I'm gonna start shave. 50 grams of carbs out of my diet from two or three of my meals and be able to implement that. So yeah, it's really important that you keep track of that. So, uh, JJ Ghost Hunters, when using the strictest form, by how much on average do you drop the weight down you would use before for the major body parts like chest, back, and legs? Um, obviously, at first, whenever you drop or whenever you start implementing a like super strict form, the weights you're able to lift are going to take a hit. But what happened for me and what happens for absolutely everyone if you stick with it is because you have the good form and a solid foundation and you're doing things correctly, you're able to build past the point that you would have been able to do a bad form. So I'm stronger now. I'm able to do more weight for more reps than I was in the past, but they're also much better reps in terms of quality. So that's, you know, both of us, we kind of made that switch, how long did you say? Pretty much when we started training. Yeah, a year and a half ago, to almost two years ago now, so. Um, Brian Santiago, how many days of cardio do you guys do a week, steady state or high intensity intervals, and how many minutes per session? Um, that's one of those things that's very, very dependent on who you are, what you look like, and what category you're doing, so. I'm 12 weeks out, I'm doing no cardio. I probably won't be doing cardio for another week or two. Um, Brian can tell you what he's doing right now, it's not a lot. 
Yeah, but I do cardio six times a week though. But it's just steady state and nothing too crazy. Yeah. So, um, you know, as, as you as you diet, I'm a really big believer, and if your everything else is on point and where it should be, you shouldn't be having to do more than you know, like 30, 45 minutes of cardio a day tops. You know. Whenever I hear people doing, you know, like 45 minutes or an hour fasted and then another hour after they train on the stairs, that to me is either a, like a diet issue or a supplementation issue. You know, it's not a, they just need that much cardio to get in shape. Thing. It's it's also different. Sometimes you see people always, when I see people say they're doing like an hour, hour and a half, is they're walking on it like this. It doesn't do that anything. When they do cardio, I'm running on that. I usually start pretty low because my hips hurt or whatever, but at the end I'm running on the Stairmaster. And he always does intervals, so it's a lot different. So another cardio I like doing is doing bleachers too. And that's not that's not easy either. If everybody a cardio I don't that, know, I do the bleachers. I yeah. just hold on for your life on the stairs yeah. and I have to. Okay. Um Ari Lombardi uh, uh, how much <laughs> how much time the typical in gym day take and do lower bodies take longer than upper. So all the uh, upper body sessions typically run about an hour, hour and 15 tops, legs, hour and a half tops. No, we're never, like honestly, I try to keep it to an hour for everything, but like legs yeah. pretty much. But today was a really good day. We yeah, it was like so. 40 minutes today, like yeah. maybe 50 minutes. So yeah, quality, not quantity. Um, Kylie Meredith uh, has a friend who wants to compete in classic physique and thinks doing no cardio whatsoever will get him lean enough uh, just dieting. What do we think about that? Um, <laughs> Should have called his friend. Yeah. <laughs> well, she does. She is a girl, so no, hopefully she's not competing in classic bodybuilding. But, um... <laughs> Did you get in a fight with your boyfriend <laughs> and you want okay. us to mediate your problems with okay. your boyfriend? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to tell you how it is. Um, there's no one on the face of the planet that's going to be in the best shape possible for a bodybuilder and a classic bodybuilding show doing zero cardio. Well, that's your Dexter Jackson. Yeah, but he's a vampire. He's lived the same for like the last 20 years. Yeah, but he's he needs to do cardio. <laughs> but anyway, so like that being said, um, not everyone will have to do 45 minutes a day or doubles or fasted or something like that. Everyone's different, but in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure I'm speaking for him too, everyone's doing some kind of cardio to be able to look their best for their competition. Okay, um, Crawler XXX, uh, get um, some of my daily protein from dairy, specifically yogurts and milk. What's your opinion on those sources? Um, in terms of yogurt, I'm a big believer in you know, like zero percent, so fat-free, like Greek yogurt before you go to bed because it's pure casein, which is a slow digesting protein, um, keeps you full longer, and obviously has a sustained release of protein throughout the night. Um, outside of that, uh, most of like your yogurts that you find in the supermarket with like the fruits and stuff have a ton of fat and a ton of added sugar, so try and stick away, stay away from those. And as far as protein from dairy goes, um, if you're saying dairy in a sense like saying whey isolate or whey concentrate, great protein source, him and I use a lot of it in our diet. If you're saying um, protein from dairy and you're referring to like milk and cheese and stuff like that, um, wouldn't recommend it for a bodybuilding lifestyle. It's hard on your stomach. Um, while not everyone's lactose intolerant, humans in general don't handle lactose very well and cause a lot of gastric distress if you're getting a large chunk of your protein from it. So try and stick away from like the milk proteins when you're talking about like milk and cheese and stuff. But whey protein's good to go. Okay, um, Eric Sturm, how much cardio are you doing during your prep and typically what changes with your diet? Um, we already touched on the cardio a couple times, but in terms of the diet, both him and I, um, the only thing that did change was the carbs. So like the protein stayed consistent all the way through, uh, with the only exception being like on the refeed days, like sometimes it'd be like a 10 ounce or 11 ounce steak instead of just eight ounces of turkey or chicken or fish. 
And why do you eat white rice instead of brown rice from DS? Because white rice is infinitely easier to eat, much tastier, and I digest it quicker and it empties out of my system quicker. The whole like brown rice is healthier for you thing came from like the fact that like whenever like deconditioned people are trying to get in shape and they're used to eating everything that's not nailed to the kitchen floor, brown rice will keep them full longer. That's where that came from. So it's a satiety thing, not like a health thing to me. And like I said, White rice, infinitely easier to eat, and it's like potato, potato. It's a splitting hairs, in my opinion. All right, that's all the YouTube ones. Let's go over to the Instagram one real quick and see what other questions there are. Let's see. Hey, everyone actually listened and put them on the YouTube channel right on there. All right, well, that's all the Q&As for this week. Uh, if we missed you, um, come back with another question. We'll get you... Uh, next time hopefully yeah so we're uh, wrapping up this episode um, hope you uh, enjoyed it obviously and then I uh, hope anyone that asked their questions I answered most of them so most of y'all probably got their questions answered um, like I said last video uh, be sure if you like these videos to just subscribe to LeBron Nutrition's YouTube channel so you can figure out whenever we're releasing each week's episode um, and also remember to put your uh, questions in the comments of this video so we can answer them on the following week's episode but um, anyways yeah so like I said uh, just to recap we're sitting 12 weeks out 16 weeks out Next time you see us, we'll probably be a little bit closer to like 10 and 14-ish. But uh, yeah, so I'll be going to the Arnold and uh, hopefully get some kind of content there for y'all. But if not, sorry. But um, yeah, so we'll see y'all next time, guys.